And then I want to finish on this uh, question related to cortical syndromes about handedness. Uh, does handedness has something to do with localization of lesion? What's the important? Why do we ask patients right hand, left hand? And I see more and more neurologists, especially general neurologists, are starting to give up on this question, thinking, oh, it's almost meaningless. Um, the handedness has something to do with what we call dominance of the cortex. We have two cortex, right? The right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere. And there are certain tasks that are present on both sides, like controlling the arm. One side control one arm, one side control the other arm. But there are certain tasks that are given to one side of the brain. The most obvious one is speech. The speech production, the actual words of an understanding is on one side of the brain. And the, the intonation, meaning that how loud you need to speak, how soft you need to speak, how do you want to sound when you're angry, that the, the non-word uh, part of the speech, the subliminal part of the speech is in the other side of the cerebral cortex. The music perception, the rhythm, the, you know, in all of this called prosody and lack of that is called aprosody. So if you have damage to the side of the brain that creates speech, that side is called dominant and you will have a true loss of speech or understanding of speech. While if you have damage to the same area in the non-dominant part of uh, side of the brain, then you will have problem with the uh, understanding expressions. So you couldn't tell when someone is angry with you, you just cannot give meaning to loudness and intonation and, and subliminal messages in a speech or understanding music and things like that. And why the handedness, what does handedness have to do with it? The handedness, typically goes with the speech side of the brain. So if the left side of the cerebral hemisphere or left brain is creating the word production of speech and understanding the speech, then the right hand is a dominant hand and that shows up by preference on feeling comfortable in doing things with right hand that requires one hand. So if you're writing, if you're throwing a ball, um, if you're grasping something to lift up, all these single-handed tasks are easier to do with your dominant hand and more difficult to do with your left hand. Now this dominance varies. You know, there is people who are very strongly dominant, meaning that their other hand is completely useless. They cannot do anything. And then there are people who have almost no dominance, almost, uh, where they can do a lot of things with both hands. And there is famous uh, Mughal emperor who could write with both hands. Um, but, you know, we often ask this, and even those patients who have and some tasks they can do with both hands equally easily, they still have some preferences. One good way to ask with the preference is that uh, which eye, eye is your precision eye? Precision eye is that we normally go with binocular vision, both eyes open, but if you're trying to target something, let's say you're trying to shoot, then you close one eye to make it more precise, the line of shoot, because binocular vision is dual and you can close each eye and the, and the target shifts right and left. So you need to first fix one eye and then you try to precisely do it. That's also used for throwing. If you're throwing something to hit something, that can also be used for catching a fish or from the water, something like that. Binocular vision is not good for precision activities on getting to the target uh, accurately. And even those who can do things with both hands, they have one eye they use preferably for precision. There are other ways, but you know, that's one thing I commonly use. So I shared with you. All right. Long story short, let's pull back. Let's say patient is right hand dominant, uh, which you mean that the speech is in the left cerebral hemisphere. One obvious use of this handedness is that if the patient has a stroke, uh, and someone says patient has a stroke and patient has a loss of speech, you can tell which side will be weak, right? If you know the patient is right hand dominant, you will say oh, it's a left cerebral hemisphere score, stroke without examining the patient. Uh, and patient should have a right side weakness because the speech is lost. Um, it's also important beyond stroke in many other things. So let's take, for example, of an epilepsy. If the patient is having epilepsy, epileptic uh, seizures, and they are localized seizures, meaning coming from one part of the brain and staying there for a while before generalizing. And I tell you that the patient has speech impairment during their seizure before they lose consciousness and they shake both sides. Now you know that very likely the seizure is starting on the left side of the brain because speech production is on the left side uh, if the patient is right-handed. Um, 
and there are you know other simple certain things are also localized so there is localization of memory for example memory can be localized to one side of the brain but does not always follow the dominant side so one side hippocampus may store more memories than the other side uh, and it's important for epileptic surgery and there are finer details like that which are useful in these kind of scenarios another scenario i personally use because i am a movement disorder neurologist and i do parkinson's disease management is the handedness and its uh, relationship with the onset of tremors or onset of parkinson's and you know if the patient says i had a, uh, if i examine the patient and patient has both sides uh, speed equal and i ask them okay what's your dominant side you know are you right handed or left handed patient says, i am right handed now it means that the patient's right hand has become slower and is now matching the left side because the dominant side is much better right we just talked about it they can write faster they can draw faster grab something similarly if you have them tap their right hand as fast as they can and you have them tap their left hand as fast as they can you could often tell that one side is slightly better than the other side and that's their dominant side that's a normal phenomena and in parkinson's if both sides start becoming equal it would mean that the right hand dominant and now the right hand is slower than baseline because now it's equally as fast as the other side which is the non dominant side there are many other such finer points that there is no single table or algorithm i can give you okay handedness you know fits these 10 things or 20 things Uh, if i keep talking about different topics handedness can come up handedness may be useful in headache handedness may be useful i'm saying handedness what i mean is that the brain dominance is useful all of these things and handedness is just a, just a marker of brain dominance which side of the brain is dominant and 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 using those clues for different diagnoses like epileptic diagnosis stroke and headaches and hemiplegic migraines and and so on and so forth then lastly a uh, comment on the handedness is that well how often is someone left handed uh, uh, or dual handed uh, in most population studies uh, 85% of the population 70 to 85% so 70% to all the way up to 85% are right handed or uh, almost both use they can use both hand they can use right hand so it could be as low as 70% it could be as high as 85% uh, right hand dominance that means that 15 to 30% of patient are left hand dominant uh that they can use left hand or they can use both hands actually sorry right hand is pure 15 to 30% include those people who are uh ambidextrous they can use both hands almost equally good they often they have one preference right or left now does that mean that if the right all the right hand people always have a left brain dominance uh the brain that controls the right hand does that mean that the left hand dominant always have the right brain dominant no that's the twist in the tail uh they say that and i'm not sure on this data exactly but what i remember from my from my earlier training is that 50% of the patient who have left hand dominance still has a left brain as the dominant brain meaning it holds the speech remember the definition of a dominant brain side of the brain is that the side that produces the speech and understands the speech and they still have the left brain dominance maybe these are are the ones mostly who are somewhat ambidextrous they use both hands and they say left hand dominant although they can use right and left both and they learn to use left more by preference maybe i'm i'm just guessing here but bottom line is that even with the left hand dominant people half of them will still have a left brain dominance and only other half will be right brain dominant so you cannot use the handedness of left handedness as a diagnostic for which brain is dominant so often the handedness is useful in troubleshooting if you are building a scenario where the lesion is and you're getting a little bit confused with some of the mixed picture then for example someone comes in and they have a stroke of the left side and they are not able to speak now you know they're right brain dominant which is the uncommon presentation right common presentation is right side weakness and and the speech problem which is the left brain speech stroke but if there someone comes in with a left side stroke weakness and the right, and the speech problem which they shouldn't normally with a left brain dominant so that means they have right brain dominant so those kind of a similarly in a, in a seizure scenario if you're hearing a seizure scenario that's kind of strange it has some features of right and left brain and you should you should remind the, yourself that oh maybe the brain dominance is on the right side and not on the left side we we get so used to neurology always thinking of left brain as dominant and when we run into those patterns that don't make sense to us is when the handedness is useful information to have hopefully this was helpful helpful and it was uh, not too long of a discussion